They call it the HP Victus. Now I've been waiting for this laptop for quite a while. I've been wanting to get my hands on the Ryzen version and I finally got one in the studio. Now this is the de facto replacement for the HP Pavilion gaming laptop of years past. The HP Pavilion gaming laptop has given us some great results over the years and it was time for a refresh though. That was kind of my opinion. It became kind of chintzy and chunky and I just didn't really love the build quality of that laptop as a whole. Now this is also what we're looking at as kind of the doppelganger of the HP Omen 16. Very, very, very similar chassis to the HP Omen 16. However, we're missing the aluminum keyboard deck. Now, I will uh, note back real quick, if you're curious about the head-to-head -head between the HP Pavilion and this new model and or the HP Omen and this new model, I'm gonna have those head-to-head -head reviews coming at you soon. It'll be linked up at the end of this video. Now, what I'm gonna do in this video is cover the performance as well as some of the elements I didn't get to in my unboxing. So if you want to see all of my thoughts on the build quality and usability of this laptop, I will link that video up so you can check it out. The unboxing will give you a full view of how I feel about this laptop in that way. But first and foremost, I didn't get a chance to check out the webcam, so here's a quick look at that. Here is the webcam on the HP Victus. It's got good coloring. It looks pretty accurate for the coloring. Definitely a little bit grainy because I do have really good lighting here in the studio. So next we're gonna look at is the keyboard. Now I do like the keyboard and trackpad on the Victus. It's a little on the rattly side, but I do like the size and the click. It's very, you know, confidence invoking, um, but it just doesn't feel as quality as it is embedded into the HP Omen. Like, um, let me give you a quick sample so you can hear what I'm talking about. It's kind of a rattle. Now taking a look at the keyboard, I like the spongy but responsive key press on this keyboard. It's quiet, as you heard here, heard there in the sample. It also has kind of a medium to long key travel. So overall, love the keyboard. I wish the trackpad, for sp specifically for my model, uh, was embedded into the keyboard deck a little bit better. Sounds a little rattly. I know the HP Omen in the past, I felt like that has a better embedded keyboard um, trackpad, but overall it's very good. Now, also, here's a quick audio sample for you of the speakers, so you can check that out. Now, before we forget, let's take a look at the ports. On the left side of the chassis, we have our RJ45, our power port, HDMI, USB type A, and USB type C, as well as our headphone jack and our SD card slot. On the right side, we just simply have these two USB type A's. And of course, you can see on the back, we have a nice large vent giving us pretty solid cooling, which we'll check out later in the video. Now, this laptop does come with a rather subpar screen. However, you can upgrade the screen to get better color accuracy. As you can see the results coming up on the screen now. The color accuracy, the color gamut range is not good. However, you can upgrade the screen, but if you're gonna upgrade the screen, you might as well, in my opinion, go for the HP Omen with the aluminum top cover keyboard deck, not top cover, aluminum keyboard deck, because that will just give you that little next level of quality and it will come with a better screen if you make sure you select the 144 hertz variant. If you get the 60 hertz or 120, pretty sure the 120, if you get the 144 hertz variant, you'll have that strong color accurate screen. Um, now keep in mind that this laptop does have a very similar screen flex as the HP Omen. It is not great. It has quite a bit of screen flex. And along the bottom here, it's actually a little bit stiffer than it would be along the top. And then we have a bit of screen bounce. So there's a few kind of quality issues that I find personally. Um, I've been a huge fanboy of the HP Omen and HP Victus now the HP Victus. Um, but as I'm kind of seeing newer laptops come out that don't really do these shaky things as much, something like the Asus Zephyrus G15 or perhaps the uh, Asus Zephyrus M16, I'm kind of like, okay, I wish they didn't, you know, have this bouncy screen. I wish the screen flex was a little bit less, things along those lines. Now the battery life is something that was actually pretty surprisingly good in my opinion for a gaming laptop. As you can see the results coming up on the screen now, I run the Passmark battery life test. I do a YouTube video stream at about 35 to 40% brightness on the screen. And then also for Photoshop, I run the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat. And then for video editing, I do a 4K project and I run that on loop until the battery goes dead 
playback inside of the app. So that is how those battery life test results are accomplished. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the HP Victus, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the performance. And this is an area that I feel like we get a pretty good bang for buck here. We have the Ryzen 5 5600H, the RTX 3050 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 SSD. Now, first and foremost, let's take a look at Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core. And for the price point, we actually have pretty solid performance. It's not, you know, blowing us away in these, you know, simulated benchmarks. But like I always say, life is not made up of simulated benchmarks. So let's get into some of the more of the real world tests. Now, as we get into Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, you can definitely see that we have better performance than last year's GTX 1650 that is inside of the Pavilion gaming laptop. So if you're gonna kind of decide between those two, hey, is the RTX 3050 Ti really worth it? I am seeing an increase in performance over that model, even with the Ryzen 5 5600H, if it's in both of the laptops, and the only difference is that GTX versus the RTX card, you are seeing a difference in performance. And so if you want and need that extra performance, for instance, for 3D modeling, it'll be worth that price for you making that upgrade. There's been a little contradiction between if it's worth it or not. To me, I'm seeing the value in the benchmarks here. Now, moving forward into After Effects. Now, keep in mind that After Effects has a bit of a pull between GPU and CPU. So again, we're seeing an increase in performance over something like the Pavilion with the better GPU inside of the system. Now, moving on down the line to video editing. Now, this laptop performed well. I was actually surprised that the B-RAW and red footage playback was was pretty excellent. Now the export times are good, uh, nothing outstanding or crazy or better than models in the past, pretty much fell on the standard par as where it should for a Ryzen 5 5600H. Now you're going to get a little bit better uh, export times than say that last year's GTX 1650 as well. So again, worth the upgrade. Well, maybe not worth the upgrade. Like if you have one, I don't know if it'd be worth going out and buying a new one, but it'd be worth choosing the one over the other one. So yeah, there's that. Now, as far as DaVinci Resolve is concerned, you're gonna have smooth playback inside of the program and pretty solid export times for 4K out of Resolve. Now, looking at Photoshop, I thought, hey, we got some pretty good results here. If you look at the HP Omen with the Ryzen 7 5800H, this laptop is only about 40 points behind it. Now, I think that this Ryzen 5 5600H is a great bang for buck. As you can see with the Ryzen 7 5800H, you're only getting about 40 extra points. And so those extra, you know, cores and threads aren't making that big of a difference inside of the app. And that's really what uh, we wanna take away from these benchmark results here. Now let's check out some thermals. Now this is one area that I didn't pull up yet. The thermals in the laptop are decent. We get about 83 degrees Celsius out of video editing with 4K. And so I thought, okay, that's a pretty good result. It's not great. Now that's at full performance, pushing the laptop kind of to its limits. And then you see is the HP Omen um, up there, it's about 86 degrees Celsius. So you save about three degrees Celsius. I like to see laptops in more of like the high 70s, maybe mid 70s, like as a good point. Um, so thermals were good, but they weren't great. They weren't as bad as something like um, the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim, which has like 96 degrees Celsius during a full push for 4K export. Um, so I would say it's cooler than that, but it wasn't like blowing me away. Like, oh, this is so cool. I love it. It's great. Cool as in temperature wise. For those of you who have hung out to the end here, would you be considering the Ryzen 5 5600H version versus the Intel i5 version? Let me know. I can definitely make a video about that comparing my thoughts between those two. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Links if ready to make a purchase in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.